I had an audition. This was after I did the movie Grease, and I was in New York hoping to get a career back on the stage after being in, I think at that time, maybe I was in three or four films. And my agent said, how would you like to work with a Beatle? I said, what? Work with a Beatle? Yes, Ringo Starr is going to be part of this new show for children called Shining Time Station. And you would be the station mistress, Stacy Jones. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, work with a beetle? <laughs> and that, at that point, I didn't know how popular the Thomas stories were because I was just, uh, I think I was maybe at that time 30 or 29, something. But apparently, Thomas was already such a rage in, in England. And this was the introduction of Thomas and all his adventures and all the other trains to America. So I went in and there was Britt and uh, Rick Sigelkow, who were the, uh, the executive, she was the executive producer, he was the producer. It was fun, I had a great time. My background before getting into films was uh, touring with the children's uh, pantomime company. I mean, performing for children. Uh, we were adults, but uh, so children's theater was my background. The story was fun. It was fun to see that Stacy Jones had this magic ability to transform things. Some of that kind of went away. The special effects maybe were too expensive. I don't know, but she still had a magical quality that I liked. Night in Utah, take two, Mark. Okay, settle in, please. And action. I remember the first time I had a conversation with Britt about the show after I was hired to play Stacy Jones and we were we were in the studio and she was so elegant, uh, so beautiful and spoke with this, you know, perfect English accent. And I kind of marveled at what a ingenious person she was because at that point now I heard about what a what a phenomenon Thomas was in England and how she created all these stories. She got the rights to it. And um, Britt Allcroft is definitely a visionary. She sees what she wants she, and she makes it happen. Come on, lady, little engines can do big things. We had finished making the series and we made some hour long specials of Shining Time Station, which were wonderful. Britt said, we're gonna go to the Isle of Man where the reverend who wrote the stories lived, where the original Thomas the Train lived and worked. And I just flipped. I was so excited to, to be a part of uh, creating this dream of hers into a, a full length feature film. Hello, Shining Time Station manager Stacy Jones speaking. Shining Time Station was the main set was the station. When we did some specials, we went on location, but the station was where people came in and out. So there was always some very interesting, <laughs> sometimes bizarre characters. And then there was my foil, my nemesis schemer who was always creating some kind of mischief. Whereas in the movie, it was, there was a large, everything was, was expanded upon. The vistas of the Isle of Man were so magnificent that Brit, her own imagination began to open up the story to all the places that Thomas would have passed on his route. So we traveled all around the island, uh, seeing all the places, and we were actually in a station that they created to, to make a Shining Time Station. What was great about working with Britt as a director is that she knew every Thomas story, and she knew about all the other trains and their idiosyncrasies and their you know, wants and their disappointments and their mischievousness, you know, she knew everything. So there was a depth to every character, including the trains that um, only she could 
she could produce because uh, she knew them so well, so intimately. I was thinking, how does Mr. Conductor travel here? By gold dust. But if there's a lost engine, maybe there's a lost railway too. Mr. Conductor's railway. The journey gets bumpier and bumpier. There was a shot in the film where I think we're waiting for a truck to come. Peter Fonda and I were waiting and and we were just, you know, relaxing and waiting and relaxing. And then we were sitting and then we were lying down in the grass. And he told me, he, I didn't, you know, if you think about Easy Rider, he's a motorcycle rider. So he was telling me about how famous the Isle of Man was. Even for adults, it's motorcycle races. So he was telling me all about the uh, races that he had uh, been in and the ones coming up. I found this child's drawing in an old locker in the Lost and Found. Look at the signature, Billy. Burnett Stone. <laughs> it's hard to believe Burnett could have ever looked that happy. Oh, Burnett had a wonderful smile. And Russell and I, we, we again, it was just in awe of these vistas, we would just, you know, in between takes, just be standing on cliffs, looking out at the ocean and just feeling the contact with the land was, was, was and, and Russell was very funny too. He was, uh, <laughs> enjoyed his company. Mark. Billy, you know when Mr. Conductor blows his whistle for his sparkles? I've always taken it for granted that's all he needs to get to the island of Sodor. But maybe he also uses a secret railroad. And, and maybe the beauty that's all around us is because of the gold dust and because of the secret railroad. And, and, and maybe this mysterious engine is somehow connected to all of this. Oh, Billy, look at the bouquet tree. It's losing all its blossoms. It's much too early for that. I have a son who's now going to be 28 this month, but he was very little when we did Shining Time Station, and he's autistic. So we're going back to the dark ages of autism. Well, Shining Time Station, but mainly Thomas and all the stories and all the friends is such a popular series for autistic children, boys and girls. There is something, and I, I have to relate this back to um, Brit's heart, that is so sweet and gentle, and the stories are engaging at, in a way that's not frightening in any way or disturbing in any way. Even if there's a problem, the problem is gonna get solved, you know? I did a lot of um, going to openings of, of different stores that were featuring the Thomas characters and signing autographs. And I would have like around me, like the Pied Piper, all these kids that just didn't want to leave Stacy's side. One little boy just was sitting on my lap the whole time. And his father said, you don't understand. He loves you. He wanted to be you for Halloween. It really captures this very sensitive heart of an autistic child. And I know that the movie was able to do that as well. What if it's dark? It will be for a while. And cold. Maybe. And how will I get back again? Because you're a really useful engine and we'll find a way. Then I'll try.